Hey there, hi there, ho there, and welcome back to My Start Reviews. My name is Michael. I am a former bartender from the Kalamazoo area, and today we are on day 20 of 25 Drinks of Christmas, which is really exciting. No Christmas attire today, though, because what we're making is really not that much of a Christmas drink. Today we're going to look at the Earl Grey Martini and discuss exactly what that is, how to make one, and a way that I think it can be slightly improved. An Earl Grey Martini is actually a gin sour made with an Earl Grey infused uh, gin. Uh, it was created by a bartender from New York at the old Milk and Honey Speakeasy, which is unfortunately now closed. Something about it, it feels very Christmassy to me. I think including tea in a lot of things, the same way that tea is included in a lot of Victorian punches and things, uh, it sort of gives them that kind of Christmassy feel. And that is something that I would argue is existent here too, but this also serves as just a really nice addition to your cocktail encyclopedia, as it were. But you'll need uh, two lemons, one for juice, one for garnish, uh, an egg white, uh, some simple syrup, elderflower liqueur, just a very small amount, it's actually optional here. Uh, and then this is Earl Grey infused gin. Uh, I made this by taking a quarter cup of Earl Grey tea, nothing fancy, I used um, twinings, but if you had nicer loose leaf tea, use that. Uh, and I just steeped that into some gin in a clean mason jar for two hours until uh, it was done, and then strained it out, put it back in the bottle. As far as I know, this will be shelf stable. I'm refrigerating it just in case it isn't. What's really fascinating about this is, first of all, I used Svetka gin, which I've never done before. It's actually quite good gin, which I was surprised by, but also, what this ends up doing is creating a very robust and full-bodied gin, as opposed to what I would normally describe gin as being very high-hat, very high-note, very loud botanicals in your face. And that's great. A lot of, in a lot of contexts, you want that. Like a good martini, I think, has a good, loud, juniper-forward gin. But here, you kind of take the gin and you make it its own sort of standalone thing and then accentuate it in a cocktail, which is pretty great. Um, I've actually been sipping on some of this for a little bit now, and I've, I've got some in a Glencairn here. Most of what you smell when you when you get it is actually Earl Grey, <laughs> that bergamot and black tea, and bergamot's a bitter orange. Um, it's what's the primary flavor um, in Earl Grey tea. When you sip it, you get that, like, your gin botanicals. Um, this one is very, like, lime and juniper forward. It's very bright and clean tasting. Um, you get that backed up by this kind of nice vanilla, smooth, bergamot, orange tea note. It's very nice. So we're gonna make an Earl Grey Martini with it. Um, I, I, I will list the bartender who came up with its name in the description. I unfortunately can't remember it right now. I'm gonna use, um, use the spec that's listed on liquor.com. One and a half ounces of our Earl Grey gin, uh, three quarters of an ounce, I think, of lemon juice, and then a full ounce of simple syrup. That spec doesn't make sense to me. I'm gonna take that <laughs> and make um, my own sort of variation of it. So we're gonna start uh, by going ahead and getting our egg white in there. If you've never done an egg white in a cocktail before, what it does when you have a sour component levied against it is it will emulsify the egg white and turn it into a foamy kind of frothy head. That'll rest at the top of the cocktail. Now it's a flip because it's got the yolk in there. All right. This is actually a way you can strain your egg whites off of your eggs if you want to. <laughs> you just have to be comfortable getting your, getting egg all over your Ugh. Now that we've got our egg white in there, I'm gonna go ahead and follow that up with uh, a full ounce of lemon juice. I think that the thing that was missing from the spec that I initially saw on, on liquor.com was a balance in the sort of acid component versus the sweets. Uh, next up, I'm going to do uh, three quarters of an ounce, actually, of simple syrup here. I feel like maybe it's a full ounce of simple syrup because it might be a one-to-one -one simple. Um, so I'm dialing that back, not only because I think that um, three quarters of an ounce uh, to, of simple to one ounce of citrus juice gives us a nice kind of sourness um, as opposed to a uh, sort of sweet citrus, um, but also because I think it'll, it'll just work better. I think, I think that the syrup they're using is different. Uh, next up, I'm going to make an addition of a quarter ounce of elderflower liqueur. This is Saint Germain. Um, this stuff is great, and it's very loud. What I'm trying to do here is embrace some of the floral notes you can find in tea and encourage them to come out into the cocktail. Uh, lastly, I need two ounces of Earl Grey tea. It's Earl Grey tea? Hold on a second. <laughs> Earl Grey gin. You can use whatever gin you want to make this. Um, I would use a gin that you enjoy. Um, I tried this vodka, realized it was good, and then decided to use it for this. Um, if you wanted to take a cheap gin and make it better by infusing Earl Grey into it, go for it. I think that'll work just fine. 
we gotta shake this up now, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw my uh, cocktail spring in there. And then give this a good shake for just a couple of seconds to get that egg white going. Ooh, almost just fucking cut myself on a giant knife. Wow. Once we've got that dry shake done, we'll go ahead and do a wet shake as well. Be mindful that um, I'm refrigerating my gin here, so there's enough coldness in this shaker to keep it from exploding. When you shake it, normally a dry shake will create positive pressure and it'll want to move out on you, so be careful and get a good grip on it when you shake it. And then shake for 10 to 12, 10 to, yeah, 10 to 15 seconds to chill. Now, traditionally, uh, the garnish for an Earl Grey martini is actually um, a sugar rim and then a lemon peel as well. I'm foregoing the sugar rim because first of all, we've done a lot of them this season and I do not want to do too many more, um, but also because I think it's kind of unnecessary. We've rebalanced this, I think, to be in favor of a very, um, a very like appropriate amount of sweetness and you don't want to be able to change that by overdoing it. Um, with a sugar rim, so spraying this in. And then the other part of the garnish is a lemon peel, which I will stick with because I think that that's probably a good way to go. If somebody can teach me how to do this without making myself look like a dipshit, that'd be awesome. <laughs> if we're gonna express that across the top, lay it on there like so, and there you have an Earl Grey Martini. Now what's unusual about this particular cocktail is that I have its raw spirit here to compare against and see how what we're doing here exemplifies or damages the quality of our base. So let's start with a taste of the regular Earl Grey gin. Very tannic, very black tea notes, sort of rounded, in its, in its juniper approach. The juniper kind of falls in with the, the flavoring agents in the tea, like the bergamot orange, which is very noticeable. There's a really strong Earl Grey impact, and it's nice. It, it sort of adds those things to the context of a gin without rounding out what the gin is doing too much so you can still get the regular flavor. Now in the context of the cocktail, however, which now has a developed a nice foamy head, which is always nice to see, Wow. Wow, that is, that is wonderful. Wow. Wow, okay. What we've done is take this and in the way, the way that it's presenting, essentially make like a cup of tea with it almost. The egg white is giving it this nice creaminess, which is kind of like how you would add milk to like an, uh, an English style tea, like Earl Grey. Um, the lemon express expression across the top and the juice in the actual cocktail is giving it this nice light citrusiness, but it's it's not it's not just like tea in your face. It's got this nice rounded to it, roundedness to it from that sugar that we put in there. And the, the only thing that I think I'm missing actually is the elderflower, which is kind of rare. Let me try to look for that real quick. No, no, it is in there and it's part of what's making it so nice. A lot of teas read as floral, but not floral in the essence of like flowers. There's kind of different degrees of what floral means. It's a descriptor for flavor. And this is really on the end of the spectrum that leans more towards t dry tea leaves than it does flower petals or flower stems or grass. <clears throat> and it rolls across your palate. You get that, this kind of sweetened tea and citrus with this nice creamy mouthfeel and the elderflower kind of pokes its way out through those, those notes of the Earl Grey and, and kind of develops out of them and kind of becomes its own thing. It overtakes it towards the end. It gives it this evolution towards elderflower that kind of resolves in tannic bitterness um, from the Earl Grey in the gin. Which is impressive because uh, you, you wouldn't think that it, it doesn't, sh that sort of tannic, long droning tannic note doesn't really appear when you drink the raw spirit. Yeah, it's certainly more bitter than regular gin. 
but it doesn't like drone on your tongue the way this does. It's interesting. It's kind of given it this this sort of gardeniness. I like it. You can go without it though. I think it might actually help keep the drink from from developing that kind of bitter, oversteeped tea flavor. You can keep the other flower out. Well, thank you so much for watching day twenty of uh, twenty five drinks of Christmas. We made an Earl Grey martini, which you can impress with at your office party or your New Year's party this year, assuming you don't bust it out after Christmas. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, click that like button below and subscribe for tomorrow's episode. I don't know what we're doing, actually. I didn't get this far, so uh, I didn't think I'd get this far. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.